evening and welcome to Rajya Sabha TV. I am Ashwarya Kapoor with news tonight. Now the big story that has unfolded through the day. BJP and Shiv Sena have parted ways after 25 years. Close on their heels. The Congress and NCP also announced the split of their 15-year-old alliance. So after a long time, it will be a four-cornered contest in Maharashtra. We'll get you all the details of both these stories. But first up, let's take a look at the headlines. Allies break up in Maharashtra. BJP parts ways with Shiv Sena. NCP says it will fight elections alone. First, Develop India, says Prime Minister Narendra Modi after launching Make in India initiative for the country. Prime Minister Modi leaves for a five-day visit to the United States, will aim to improve strategic relations with America, call for reforms at the UN. Mars Orbiter mission sends a second picture from the Red Planet. Tweets that it is getting better at it. And a day after Algerian terrorists behead a French tourist, a UN Security Council passes resolution to block jihadi recruits. BJP has called off its 25-year-old alliance with the Shiv Sena today. The announcement came after talks over seat sharing in Maharashtra assembly polls failed to break the deadlock. However, BJP wants to keep its alliance with the smaller parties in the state for the polls. Earlier, Shiv Sena accused BJP for the split. Suspense over the future of BJP Shiv Sena alliance came to an end on Thursday with the announcement of a split. BJP State President Devendra Fadnavis and Eknath Khadse held a press conference to announce the decision. The party has blamed Shiv Sena's inflexible approach to seat-sharing talks as the reason behind the split. BJP also said that it will continue the Mahayuti alliance along with the smaller allies. In this discussion, we have not got a chance to get the same thing. We have not got a chance to get the same thing. We have not got a chance to get the same thing. और स्लेप हमारे कोर ग्रुप ने यह निर्णय लिया है कि अभी सुशील का साथ का ये 25-30 साल का जो आयोग से हमारा जो युति हमारी है हम आज खत्म करने वाले हैं और ये खत्म हो चुकी है मित्र पक्षों को जिस प्रकार से अकोमोडेट किया जाना चाहिए हमको जिस प्रकार से अकोमोडेट किया जाना चाहिए वो हो नहीं रहा और उसी दृ the alliance had reached breakpoint over the number of seats each party would contest. In a sign that the end game could be near, BJP President Amit Shah cancelled his trip to Mumbai for the second straight day. Shiv Sena blamed BJP for calling off the alliance in a hurry. उनका जो प्रस्ताव था उनके बाद हमारे उद्योगी से होनी थी। तुलजापुर से उनके साथ फोन पे बात की, बातचीत करने के लिए वो हमारे साथ आने वाले थे। दो आधे घंटे के प्रतीक्षा के बाद हमें मालूम पड़ा कि हमारे सब सन्मानीय जो हमारे साथ युति के लिए चर्चा में बैठे हुए सन्मानीय नेतागण थे वो तो बाहर के बाहर हमें नहीं मिलते हुए निकल गए ऐसे मालूम पड़ा द बीजेपी शिवसेना अलायंस हैड स्वेप द लोकसभा पोल्स इन द स्टेट विनिंग 41 और 48 सीट्स इन द 2009 अस it remains to be seen how the split will impact the performance of the two parties in the forthcoming assembly polls. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. All right, my colleague Sham Sundar now joins us live for more details on this. Sham, this is the breakup of a 25-year-old alliance. So, the point is, what next for both Shiv Sena and BJP now? Well, Ashwarya, as far as BJP Shiv Sena Alliance uh, in Maharashtra is concerned, before uh, that we have seen in Haryana that BJP uh, ended its alliance with Janhit Congress. Uh, before Lok Sabha elections, it, it was decided that out of 90 seats, 45 BJP will contest and 45 Janhit Congress will contest. But uh, they said after the elections that uh, political situation has changed. And it, it, it didn't take very long for BJP to decide uh, uh, ending uh, alliance with Janhit Congress. But 
but uh, in Maharashtra, because uh, BJP Shivsena Alliance was 25 year old alliance, but BJP made it very, very uh, clear that uh, after Lok Sabha elections, in current political situation, BJP is not ready to uh, 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 playing a role of uh, junior partner in 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 that alliance. Uh, there was a uh, long discussion between uh, BJP and uh, Shiv Sena, and Shiv Sena's stand was very, very clear that uh, in Lok Sabha elections, BJP was the major player. Modi uh, was projected as uh, Prime Minister, and Shiv Sena uh, supported uh, uh, Mr. Narendra Modi more than uh, BJP in in uh, uh, Vidhan Sabha elections. Uh, Shiv Sena was always a uh, big player in last elections. Uh, they contested on 169 seats, and BJP contested on 119 seats. So they they insisted that uh, if BJP wants to uh, accommodate junior uh, partners of the alliance, then BJP should sacrifice. But BJP uh, uh, breaking uh, this alliance made very clear that uh, uh, they think that they have arrived a stage where they don't need to be uh, a, a, a junior partner in, uh, in mm -hmm. any alliance in the, the state assembly elections. Right. Uh, Shyam, you stay with us. We'll just come back to you uh, because uh, minutes after BJP called off its alliance with Shiv Sena, NCP also severed its uh, ties with the Congress for the Maharashtra Assembly polls. Now, addressing a press conference in Mumbai, NCP leader Praful Patel and Ajit Pawar announced that the party will go alone in the polls. Well, this decision ends uh, the 15-year-old alliance in the state after seat-sharing talks failed to end the deadlock. The two parties are sparred over demands of equal seat share and the post of chief minister. Ajit Pawar said that he will meet the governor tomorrow to submit papers regarding the decision. समान विचार की पार्टियां हैं धर्म निरपेक्ष विचारों की पार्टियां हैं उनको हम साथ में लेने का काम करेंगे कोशिश करेंगे all right, let's go back to my colleague Sham Sundar who is joining us uh, live right now. Sham, it seems it was a day of uh, parting ways in the two camps uh, in Maharashtra. What do you think could be the possibly the reason behind now NCP's decision to part ways uh, with the Congress, especially at this juncture? Well, it is uh, very easy to understand that uh, as a party, NCP has every right uh, to claim half of the seats in Maharashtra. And uh, uh, they were, uh, uh, though they were uh, junior partner partner in the uh, last Maharashtra government, uh, and this time they were demanding that there should be, you know, uh, two and half year uh, uh, system that uh, uh, half of the time uh, Congress chief minister will be there and half of the time NCP uh, chief minister will be there. But, uh, you know, political pundits were uh, uh, thinking that uh, if BJP and uh, Shiv Sena alliance breaks, in that case NCP and Congress will remain together to, uh, and it will be easy for them to register an, another win. But now uh, the, it is really, it will take some time to understand what is the strategy of uh, NCP. Uh, 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 Shiv Sena has alleged that BJP has some kind of understanding of uh, uh, with NCP. Uh, and uh, But uh, I think uh, we should wait and watch how election campaign goes and uh, what kind of results we see. And uh, is uh, there any uh, scope of uh, NCP support Supporting uh, BJP after the elections, we have to see. But yes, there, there is no doubt that there will be a multi-corner contest in uh, Maharashtra in these elections. Right, uh, Sham. Thank you so much for those details. Uh, so we are going to see multi-cornered contest in Maharashtra polls uh, this time. Let's move on in the bulletin now. Political campaigning has begun in Haryana with two high-profile rallies held today. INLD Chief Om Prakash Chautala addressed a rally in Jind, vowing to take oath as the Chief Minister from Tihar Jail if he's elected. He's serving a jail term after being convicted in teachers' recruitment scam. He's presently out on bail on health grounds. Meanwhile, Congress leader Dipinder Singh Huda also addressed a rally in Hodel today. He will be filing his nomination from Rohtak tomorrow. He expressed confidence that Congress will form the government for a third time in a row. Congress party Bahumat Kesat, 
तीसरी बार हरियाणा में सरकार बनाने जा रही है जब से कांग्रेस पार्टी के उम्मीदवारों की घोषणा हुई मैं समझता हूँ तमाम सीटों पर समीकरण बन रहे हैं लोगों में आम चर्चा है जिस नीयत से अच्छाई की नीयत से कांग्रेस पार्टी ने काम किया था और अब नब्बे सशक्त उम्मीदवार कांग्रेस के मैदान में आए हैं उसके बाद लोगों में आम चर्चा है कि कांग्रेस पार्टी चौधरी उपेंद्र सिंह हुड्डा जी के नेतृत्व में तीसरी बार हरियाणा में सरकार बनाने जा रही है and the other big story of the day prime minister narendra modi today launched the ambitious make in india campaign in a bid to help india emerge as a manufacturing hub he also assured investors that their wealth would be well utilized and well protected here the government will also amend several labor laws with a view to provide flexibility in the working hours ye sher ka kadam hai ye lion ka step hai make in india An apt symbol for a nation trying to build its image as a manufacturing hub, and effective and easy governance is Prime Minister Narendra Modi's mantra for achieving that aim. Launching the ambitious Make in India campaign, Modi said it will also create more jobs and achieve higher growth. The program involves putting in place the logistics and systems that will help address queries of potential investors in a timely manner. भारत के नागरिकों के लिए भी एफ डी आई एक जिम्मेवारी है जब मैं ये कहता हूं कि भारत के नागरिक के लिए जिम्मेवारी है बाहर के लोगों के लिए अवसर है तो मेरे एफ डी आई की परिभाषा यह है भारतीयों के लिए है एफ डी आई फर्स्ट Develop India. Laying out the red carpet for investors, the Prime Minister said he hopes industry across the globe would take his invite seriously. In the presence of several prominent corporate honchos, Modi said the gloom of the last two-three years, when industry wanted to shift abroad, has lifted. भारत को सिर्फ बाजार मत मानिए. आप भारत के हर नागरिक को उस पोटेंशियल के रूप में देखिए. जितनी तेजी से भारत का मिडिल क्लास का बल्ग बढ़ेगा गरीबी से लोग जितनी तेजी से मिडिल क्लास की ओर जाएंगे उतना ही विश्व के लिए अनुकूल बाजार में वो कन्वर्ट हो सकता है The Prime Minister also assured businesses that his government would leave no stone unturned to help them. Besides building physical infrastructure, a digital network would also be created to make the country a global hub for manufacturing. The government is fully committed to de-licensing, deregulation and radical changes in the sector. The process of applying for industrial licenses and industrial entrepreneur memorandum has been made online 24 by 7. and on the e-business website the validity of industrial licenses have been extended to 3 years a vast number of items have been taken out of the defense licensing processes several prominent industrialists were also present at the launch with inputs from akhilesh suman bureau report for rajya sabha tv Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Make in India initiative has been welcomed by top industrialists. Various national and global industry leaders were present as the Prime Minister launched the program. Prime Minister की तरफ से पूरा संकेत था कि government की तरफ से जो खामियां हैं उन्होंने उसको मेरे ख्याल में बताने में कोई कसर नहीं छोड़ी और ये भी बताया कि जो solutions possible हैं वो government के अंदर ही possible हैं. The procedure in order to 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 ease Uh, our ability to uh, build up new, uh, uh, open new offices, build up new factories, uh, recruit people uh, uh, will definitely help. Let nobody have any doubt that we can be globally competitive at our own terms, and that is why Make in India is right today. I believe there are two major strategic advantages India has. The first, our human capital, the depth, breadth. and diversity of india's talent pool is unparalleled the second is a market which affords scale and growth we have over a billion consumers with a high consumption growth rate sustainable in the into the next few decades we're eager to find opportunities to partner to co-develop some of these technologies and to make them in india our experience in india has been extremely positive And Lockheed Martin is an advocate of doing business in India. 
India has an advantage over many places in the world as its workforce is young, skilled, enthusiastic, and takes pride in the work produced. It's high time that India becomes a preferred center of choice for manufacturing for global companies. All right, the top industrialists are welcoming uh, the Make in India campaign launched by Narendra Modi. We'll take a very short break here. Coming up ahead, Prime Minister Modi outlines his agenda in the United States before leaving for Washington. Welcome back after the break. Now, Prime Minister Narendra Modi left for his five-day U.S. visit today. Before leaving, he outlined his agenda for the trip. He said that the visit will mark a new chapter in Indo-U.S. ties. He also said that India sees United States as a vital partner for the national development. Modi will meet U.S. President Barack Obama next week on the sidelines of the U.N. General Assembly. Embarking on a high-profile visit, Prime Minister Narendra Modi described the U.S. as India's vital partner. He said that he looks forward to meeting U.S. President Barack Obama in Washington. The Prime Minister is confident that his trip will bridge many divisions and mark a new chapter in strategic ties. In a statement prior to his departure for the U.S., Modi said, and I quote, I see the U.S. as a vital partner for our national development, drawing especially on the rich possibilities of partnership in education, skills, research, technology and innovation, and above all, a shared commitment to human values. When I talk about back in India, I want to talk about link-based based एक तरफ लुकिस दूसरी तरफ लिंक वेस्ट हमने इन दोनों को जोड़ करके हम ऐसी मध्यस्थ जगह पर खड़े हैं कि हम एक ग्लोबल विजन के साथ अपने आर्थिक संरचना को एक नए प्लेटफॉर्म पर खड़ा कर सकते हैं Modi will be addressing the UN General Assembly for the first time on Saturday. Apart from pitching India's long-standing demand for a permanent seat on the UN Security Council, Modi will also urge for reforms at the United Nations. Modi said he is also keenly waiting for the opportunity to meet the Indian-American community at the Madison Square Garden in New York on September 28th. Preparations are already underway to make this a success. He has already established himself and so far every report that has come, whether his visit to Brazil, his visits to Japan or Chinese Prime Minister's visit have been very positive. And I, I feel very optimistic and very certain that his visit to the United States will be equally electrifying. Prime Minister Modi will also be wooing corporate titans during his visit to attract more investments into India in an attempt to revive the economy. With inputs from Akhilesh Suman, Bureau Report for Rajya Sabha TV. And in other news, even before the excitement of reaching Mars dies down, pictures taken by the Mars Orbiter mission are starting to be beamed back to Earth. Now, two pictures have been released by ISRO, one of the Martian surface and another of its atmosphere. Take a look. The view is nice up here. This is how one of the first images captured by the Mars Orbiter mission was described by ISRO. The picture that was beamed back to Earth on Wednesday shows the Martian surface in all its red-tinged glory. It is a crater-marked surface with dark holes taken from a height of 7,300 kilometers. A team of ISRO scientists presented the first pictures of the red planet sent by the MOM spacecraft to Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Delhi. Even as excitement about this first picture died down, a second picture was tweeted on the spacecraft's Twitter handle. This one was captioned with a cheeky, a shot of Martian atmosphere, I'm getting better at it, no pressure. ISRO has said that in coming weeks, the spacecraft will be thoroughly tested in the Mars orbit and the systematic observation of that planet using its five scientific instruments would begin. MOM aims to study Mars's surface and mineral composition and scan its atmosphere for methane, an indicator of life on the red planet. The orbiter will keep moving in an elliptical path for at least six months with its instruments sending their leanings back home. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. All right, let's get back to Earth and let's get you all the other national news and updates in Nationwide. 
The Indian Navy is monitoring the activity of the Chinese Navy in the Indian Ocean region, disclosing this in the backdrop of the Chinese incursions in Ladakh. Navy Chief Admiral Robin Rowan said that Chinese warships are being deployed in the region, which is the Indian area of operations. Rowan said that the Indian Navy is ready to take on any challenge. The Calcutta High Court on a Thursday ordered an FIR against Trinamool Congress MP Tapas Patripal and a CID probe for his controversial rape murder comment. Justice Nishita Mahatre, the third judge to hear the case, issued the order. Reliance Industries Chairman Mukesh Ambani topped the Forbes magazine's list of the top 100 richest people in India for the eighth consecutive year. The magazine calculated his net worth to be $23.6 billion, up $2.6 billion since last year. For the first time, the top 100 richest tycoons in India are all billionaires, according to the rich list. And the United Nations Security Council unanimously adopted a binding resolution on Wednesday insisting nations worldwide to prevent their nationals from joining jihadists in Iraq and Syria. This as U.S. and Arab jets continue to bomb Islamic State targets in Syria. Here is more. 14, 688. The United Nations Security Council has unanimously approved a resolution to address the growing threat posed by foreign terrorist fighters. Chairing the session, U.S. President Barack Obama urged global efforts to dismantle the IS network of death. Preventing these individuals from reaching Syria and then slipping back across our borders is a critical element of our strategy to degrade and ultimately destroy ISIL. Eliminating terrorism requires international solidarity and multifaceted approach among the many tools we must use. We must also tackle the underlying conditions that provide violent extremist groups the opportunity to take root. Immediate security issues must be addressed. The resolution aims to suppress the recruiting, organizing, transporting, equipping and financing the foreign terrorist fighters worldwide. The fight against jihadist recruitments comes in the wake of U.S. intelligence reports suggesting that over 15,000 youth from more than 80 nations have joined various terror groups, especially the Islamic State. So countries do need to work together to defeat it because about 80 nations have citizens fighting with ISIL and every country is a potential target. On the sidelines of the summit, British Prime Minister David Cameron met with Iranian President Hassan Rouhani. Following the meeting, Cameron announced that he will seek the approval of his parliament to join US-led airstrikes against IS in Iraq. He said that Iran should be given a chance to help defeat Islamic State militants. Iran should also be given the chance to show it can be part of the solution, not part of the problem. But Iran's leaders could help in defeating the threat from ISIL. They could help secure a more stable, inclusive Iraq and a more stable and inclusive Syria. And if they are prepared to do this, then we should welcome their engagement. On the ground in Syria, US and coalition warplanes struck at at least 12 IS positions targeting mobile oil refineries. Pentagon officials said that these oil refineries are used by the terror group to help finance its operations, making up to $2 million per day. Islamic State now controls several oil fields in Syria and Iraq. Sales of smuggled crude oil have helped them to finance its offensive in both countries. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And in related news, in the latest round of airstrikes, the United States and coalition forces today targeted Islamic State-held oil refineries in Syria, killing 19 people. On the third night of the air campaign, the raids were carried out by U.S., Saudi and UAE fighter jets, took down 14 Islamic State fighters and hit at least four oil installations and three oil fields in the town of Mayadeen. Five other people who live near the refineries were killed in the airstrikes. Fearing further raids, militants released at least 150 people from a prison in their de facto capital of Raqqa in the southeastern Syria. Now, the Islamic State seized most of the Syria's largest oil fields earlier this year and is funding operations by smuggling oil into the black market. 
And militants in Algeria swearing allegiance to the Islamic State have released a video showing a French hostage being beheaded. The militant group had given an ultimatum to France to halt its air attacks on the Islamic State in Iraq. French President Francois Hollande said that the murder would only serve to reinforce his determination to support efforts against the jihadists. Take a look. <laughs> Yet another brutal murder on video, this time by a group linked to the Islamic State. The victim, Hervé Gourdel, was a French national killed in Algeria. De notre ressortissant Hervé Gourdel, qui a été d'ailleurs dénoncé à l'instant par le Conseil de sécurité unanimement. Cet événement tragique qui a suscité une émotion considérable. We express our deep condolences and sympathy to the family and friends of the victim, as well as to the French government. We assure them all that we will spare no effort to make sure that the perpetrators are brought to justice. The victim, Hervé Gourdel, was a mountain guide. He was picked up by the Jund al Khilafa group a day after he reached Algeria. A massive manhunt proved to be futile to locate him. France is already taking part in the US-led air strikes against the Islamic State in Iraq since last Friday. On Thursday, it carried out new raids. However, it has so far refrained from joining the US and several Arab states in attacking targets in Syria. La peur est le sentiment que les terroristes veulent instiller et c'est une victoire des terroristes. Si la peur s'installe, la France n'a pas peur. Elle est armée pour faire face à ces crimes abominables, elle les combattra, elle ira jusqu'au bout de ce combat pour... The release of the video coincided with Barack Obama's address to the United Nations General Assembly on Wednesday. The US president urged the world to come together to defeat what he called a jihadist network of death in Iraq and Syria. Islamic State has beheaded three Western hostages so far since August. US journalists James Foley and Stephen Sotloff and British aid worker David Haynes. Islamic State spokesman Abu Muhammad al-Adnani has urged its followers to attack citizens of the United States, France and other countries that joined the coalition. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And here's all the other international news and updates in the Global Buzz. Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko instructed his government to consider temporarily closing Ukraine's eastern border with Russia. The presidential decree was published on the official website asking the government to close the checkpoints to cars, sea and pedestrian traffic. The president said that the closure was needed in connect connection with the continued intervention of the Russian Federation in Ukraine's internal affairs. Palestinian factions are holding a two-day meet in Cairo since Wednesday to overcome their differences with Israel. The ceasefire struck last month between Israel and the Palestinians to end the Gaza war stipulates that the Palestinian Authority should take over civil administration in Gaza from Hamas. The global community has ramped up efforts to curb the spread of the Ebola epidemic amid warnings by WHO that it will infect 21,000 people in the next six weeks. Trials are going on at the Oxford University Centre for Tropical Medicines to cure the deadliest virus that has so far killed around 70% of those infected with the virus. Well, that's all in this edition of news. But before we go, we need to tell you all the updates from the Asian Games. Well, Indian rowers and shooters added three more bronze at the Asian Games today. The men's archery team has also assured another today. But there was disappointment for the men's hockey team, which lost to arch rivals Pakistan. India maintained the 15th position on the overall tally with 15 medals. Take a look. Good night. Indian rowers were the star of the day, winning two bronze medals at Incheon. Swaran Singh Virk rode his way to the third spot in the single skulls event. Later, the men's team picked up the second bronze by securing third position in the men's eight event behind China and Japan. On Wednesday, Dushyan Chauhan had won the first medal for the rowing team in men's lightweight single skulls. There were more cheers for India at the shooting range. The double trap women's team of Shagun Chaudhary, Shreyasi Singh and Varsha Varman won the third bronze medal of the day for India.
India were also assured of a silver in archery, while the squash players were also assured of a bronze each in the men's and women's team events after making the semi-finals. But it was heartbreak for the Indian men's hockey team, which went down to arch rivals Pakistan 1-2 in a Group B encounter. The defeat has put India's chances of progressing to the next round in jeopardy. At the end of day six of the Asian Games. India stands 15th on the medals tally. China leads the pack by a long way. Bureau report, Rajasabha TV.